founded back in 1969 by Colonel G.D. Daly in the name of conservation and education. And it has been a roaring success for the past 53 years. We're pleased to be celebrating our 34th year with you this summer. So the gates we are now approaching are electronically operated. You will notice that only one set is open at a time. This is in order to prevent any animals from wandering out as we enter the park. on either side of the bus here. You'll notice they do come in a variety of colors. The llama is the South American relative of the camel. It's been used as a pack animal for centuries. But it is hardly ever ridden as it does possess a mass. That is about it for the what you see though. As I do like to say, what you see is what you get. <laughs> So if you look off to the left hand side here, this is our cheetah breeding compound. And if you look closely, you will be able to spot one there. On the behind the fence. The cheetah is a very endangered species. Today it's estimated there are less than 8,000 remaining in the wild. Despite limited success breeding this rare species, African Lion Safari is pleased to say that over 40 cheetah have been born here at the park since 2001. We have also received the Baines Trophy, that's the highest award of Canada's accredited zoos and aquariums for our excellent work with the cheetah. Associated with Africa, the species actually evolved much farther north than was in Europe during the last ice age. Today their domain is limited to areas south of the Sahara, with a small number still living under protection in the Gir Forest of India as well. Their preferred habitat is open plains with few trees, which is ideal for hunting antelope, zebra and other prey. And each pride will have a territory where it hunts and sleeps. Lions are the supreme hunters of the savanna, able to kill animals weighing up to about a thousand pounds. Considering this, it's interesting to note that lions will sometimes pirate kills away from other predators, such as hyenas. The average adult can weigh about 550 pounds. Lions can run at about 80 kilometers an hour for short distances and leap about 11 meters.
as they kill animals right up to a thousand pounds as I mentioned it's interesting to note though they will sometimes pirate kills away from other predators such as hyenas when not hunting they are rather lazy creatures and will often sleep as much as 15 to 20 hours a day over 150 lions have been born here at the park in captivity they can live for about 25 years however in the wild they seldom live Lions are not albino, their white coat is actually the result of a genetic condition. The color of their coat is due to a color mutation which inhibits the growth of pigments along the hair shaft. The less pigment along the shaft, the paler the lion is. White lions do still have visible pigmentation in their eyes, small hands and lips. And just like tawny lions, their eyes are usually hazel or golden. Although some have blue, blue, green, or gray eye color. <laughs> Dismissed as a superstition, accounts of white lions have been around for centuries in Africa. According to African folklore from over 400 years ago, White lions were children of the sun, sent to earth as gifts. They now exist in the region of South Africa, known as the Timbabadi. Three is small cows. These are miniature zebu. They are the only true miniature breed of cattle in the world, meaning they were not bred down from a larger sized cow. These guys are considered to be very hardy, disease-resistant animals requiring very little space and care to manage. This tropical breed of zebu handles the heat very well and you'll often see them lounging in the sun on the hottest parts of the day. And on the right in the bush here you'll see our bongo. So the bongo are the largest and most colorful of the African forest antelope. You'll notice their striking reddish brown coats and white stripes, usually about 10 to 15 stripes will circle their body, although the number is hardly ever the same on both sides. They are very timid and will often disappear into the dense forest when startled. Their horns will turn inwards so they do not get snagged on any branches as the bongo travels. They're also nocturnal. <laughs> It was recently International Bongo Day. Very exciting day for the bongo, I'm sure. There's another one on the tree. Love that one. Notice the baboons, or start to see them here on the left hand side. Baboons can be found throughout Africa and southern parts of Asia. So they have a very complex social organization. Their social structure will begin at birth. All of them on the bottom. Females on the will inherit their ranking from their mothers, while males' ranking is open to challenge throughout their life. If a lower ranking baboon does something that displeases a higher ranking member, they will be punished by tail biting accompanied by screeching. Older baboons are thus afraid or at least respectful of the leader. sure-footed jumpers and climbers able to scale obstacles of about two meters. A 
unfortunately they are still hunted in Africa and it may be only a matter of time before they are gone from that area. However, in North America, free-ranging Barbary sheep have been successfully introduced to areas of the Colorado River and in California. And they're doing well there for now. I'll just remind everybody as we go along here to remain seated for the tour, please. Here's the interesting ability to increase its body temperature to about 47 degrees Celsius, thus reducing its perspiration rate and preventing water loss. It can actually survive about 9 to 10 months in this fashion without drinking a single drop of water. Drop of water, that is these other white animals here with the horns that screw around a couple of times, giving them also the nickname the screw horned antelope. So the reason they can birds that make the domestic horse a friend of man. As such, the zebra is almost impossible to train. Yeah. Up ahead here, these dark animals lying down are the white bearded wildebeest. Wildebeest can be found throughout South Central. Million members strong, the Serengeti wildebeest migration is the second largest land mammal migration on Earth, second only to the Mongolian. across around 40 acres of land here today. But before I do, I just do ask a few things from you guys. I do ask that you please remain seated throughout the tour. 
as well as I do ask that there is no eating, drinking, smoking, or vaping. And also, please keep those arms and legs well from the tree at all times, and we will have a groovy time. The 40 acres you are going to be seeing does mostly consist of open woodland, and it does act acres, which is three times the size of the reserve I am taking you through at the moment. But now back to why I'm not a huge fan of snapping turtles, okay? So, I will give them credit, while well, credit is due, they are fantastic predators. They will commonly wait at the bottom of lakes, ponds, and rivers very patiently. They will cover themselves with mud and wait for passing crayfish, frogs, small water birds, and apparently toes. My toes. Last summer, I'd gone swimming at my cottage, and I thought it was seaweed that grazed my right leg. No, joke's on me. It was actually a snapping turtle, and it decided to chase me all the way back. Because approximately every spring, a hundred migrating pairs do travel to a safari every single year. And you may have asked yourself, self, why? Why do they travel in that weird V formation, okay? So it is because, number one, it prevents wind resistance, so they're able to fly for longer periods of time and conserve their energy. Number two, it's a way for them to actually keep track of every goose they are flying with. So I like to call it the no man gets left behind method. Animal genetics, so I do love all those crazy, funky questions. Helps me to learn more. Hopefully at the end of your day, you can say African Lion Safari was a roaring success and it wasn't too wild for you.